So, we're here to talk about AMP. And who is we? We is me and these guys. <laughs> I'm Matthew and I am like a walking lullabot ad today. <laughs> That's my job. And my socks. Socks too. And my shirt. Yes. <laughs> huh? How's that? Love my job. But I work, these guys work at Lullaby too. Karen, maybe you want to introduce yourself, although you probably all know Karen. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm Karen Stevenson, um, also at Lullaby, um, longtime Drupal user, um, and, and such. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> I'm Mark Drummond. I'm a front end developer at Lullaby and also Lullaby enthusiast. And uh, excited to talk to you about some of the work that we've been doing and some cool new things. So. Cool new things are good. I just realized I didn't actually introduce myself. My name is Matthew Tift, and I work at Lullabot, and I work on the configuration system in Drupal 8 and, and on AMP. Yes. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. Down to business. So we're here to talk about accelerated mobile pages. Instant, fast, everywhere. I got to talk, 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 real fast. No. You probably have heard about instant, or not instant mobile pages, accelerated mobile pages. But one of the things I want to make clear from the beginning is what we're talking about here is specific to mobile. AMP is a way to make the mobile experience faster. Because right now, we think that the mobile experience, and lots of other people think the mobile experience is slow and clunky and frustrating. So right now, part of the reason that this happens is when we build websites, we often have to make choices where revenue decisions become more important than user experience. And we have to make business decisions because we're making websites, and sometimes we want those websites to generate revenue. And as a result, we end up with web pages that load on our phones that look good eventually, but sometimes, you know, that experience where you're trying to click on a link or something, it jumps around and you go to that other page and you start to talk. So we get frustrated. But like I like to say sometimes, we're not here to talk about like feeding the hungry or, you know, putting shelter over the homeless. We're here to speed up the mobile web. That's that's what AMP does. And the reason that um, it's important, though, to speed up the web is if you are talking about uh, wanting to maximize revenue and issues like that, studies have shown that a lot of users will abandon a page that doesn't load within three seconds. Sometimes uh, we'll, we're, we're a little bit more willing to wait on our mobile devices, but generally speaking, um, the research that Facebook and Google and others have done would indicate that a lot of people will drop off after three seconds or so. And I can actually, as a little side, say that I've kind of noticed this too once I've been working on this project, is that when I view AMP results now, now it seems like I'm getting used to things working really quickly and I like that and I don't want to wait around anymore and I'm noticing me be more um, picky about which link I want to click. But we'll get to more of that later. But the goal here with AMP is to get pages that load instantly everywhere. So there are a couple of other solutions out there. Uh, usually AMP is compared to Facebook Instant Articles or Apple News. Um, I also put up native apps because these are all solutions to the problem of a slow mobile web. And these particular solutions generally are focused on one platform whether it's in Facebook's pages or on Apple, Apple's news feeds. And these um, are different solutions, but kind of to the same problem. So then in October of last year, Google announced the Accelerated Mobile Pages project. So people nowadays will refer to this as Google AMP. And the a few months later in February, um, we first started seeing AMP. So this is very new stuff. So in case you haven't been following all of the news, this has only been around since February that we've been seeing AMP content in Google search results. And it was just a couple weeks ago that we started seeing AMP content in Google news results as well. 
So now when you go to a Google or news.google.com and you do a search, you'll see a carousel and the top 14 stories or so are, are there and those are gonna be AMP results. So this is kind of what it looks like. This is a, just a little GIF of showing, or GIF, oh, no, I don't wanna get into that. Um, <laughs> this is a moving image thingy that shows what happens when you do a search um, on your phone, so it's highlighting the fact that, again, this is on your mobile device. And you can see these little lightning bolts below those top um, things. That's what I mean by carousel. And if, if you notice, if you click on these, you can actually slide through the results. So this is AMP in action, if you will. And the idea here, again, is that it loads instantly, quickly. That's kind of redundant. Oh, well. So the difference, of course, though, with AMP is that it's an open source project. And I think this is, this is kind of key and part of the reason why it's become one of the more successful or more widely adopted uh, solutions to this problem of a slow mobile web. So they host it on GitHub. All the code is open source. It's Apache 2 license. And so you can see all of the code, which again, different from some of the other solutions to a mobile web, like an app on your phone that you have to download. And so far, there's over 130 contributors to this project and hundreds of partners. There's a, a full list, but you can see that already Twitter and Vimeo and, and Vine and the BBC and Medium and the New York Times, all of these folks have already signed up and started, started um, getting involved with this project. And as a result, uh, I do think it's probably fair at this point, to, that, like calling it Google AMP is probably not the most accurate thing. It seems like we just call it the AMP project. But what is AMP? Well, there are three main components to us. And we made this ses session specifically non-technical, so we're gonna try and not get too technical, but to give you the, some of the key parts. But I will say that there's the AMP HTML is one aspect. There's the runtime or the JavaScript library, and then uh, you could also say the, the AMP cache is the third component. So let me say a few words about each of these. So AMP HTML is a lot like regular HTML in that it loads in a, any browser. It, and when you have, say, on your Drupal site, you have nodes, we know what these are, you have your content. So on, in the metadata of the regular page that you're already serving, it has this rel amp HTML, and it points to the amp page. So we have, so node one, the amp version, in Drupal at least, is, ends with the question mark amp, and then if you're looking at the, the metadata of the amp node, it points back to the other one. So that's kind of how search engines find your amp content is you already have your regular content, already exists, and you just say, hey, search engines, I also have an AMP version. So, most of the tags are regular HTML tags, but there are a number of them that have special AMP versions of them. So, the specifics, for example, would be you have something like an image tag, but in an AMP page, you have AMP image. The same with video, audio, iframe. And you end up with these somewhat funny looking AMP hyphen iframe kind of things, but really they end up looking a lot similar to the regular HTML components, but they're sometimes structured a little bit differently. And I could also point out that the reason that they make all of these types of choices is always speed. AMP prioritizes speed. So when you think, well, why are they, why are they doing it this way? The answer is almost always to make it fast. That's one of the priorities with AMP. The CSS, is also on that same page that has your, your site. So again, not getting too technical, but the CSS is all inline. So rather than having a separate document for your CSS and your HTML, it's all in the same document. And not only that, there is a limit to the size of the CSS you can use, 50K. So you can't go crazy with your CSS and, and AMP and uh, they, they actually will validate pages. Uh, there, there's, again, I don't wanna get too technical, but the, the validation happens and it says if your page, if the CSS 
part of your page is more than 50K, it won't validate at AMP and it won't be found by Google search engines. The, uh, the other component of AMP is the JavaScript. So I'll read this. AMP HTML documents do not include any author written JavaScript nor any third party scripts. And that's right, no JavaScript. So a lot of people think this is one of the craziest things about AMP is that you don't write JavaScript. Now some of us that don't like writing JavaScript kind of think this is cool, but <laughs> there is JavaScript with AMP, but it just all comes from the AMP runtime. And the reason again, why would they say no JavaScript? For speed. Most of the time when you have third-party JavaScript libraries, they often account for significant, in the realm of speed, they account for a significant reason why the page is slowly, slow to load, is that we're pulling in other libraries, the content's jumping around. In, in other words, the web browser, when it's loading the page, it doesn't know ahead of time all of the things that are there, but by doing it this way, having all the JavaScript just in one library, once you've loaded one AMP page, on your phone, because JavaScript is always loaded down to your device, then, you out, then it's there, and then it also, because of the way the AMP H HTML and the JavaScript and the CSS works, it knows what to load right away. And then, in addition to that, you have this, this AMP cache. So Google basically provides a free CDN for people that are offering up their pages in AMP. And you might have heard about this part. So this too, very fast. Google wants, wants the web to work fast, and they provide the cache. So in that uh, carousel that we were looking at, that was the cached versions of AMP pages showing up in Google search results very quickly. So you also, in addition to having the JavaScript already there and in small files, you have, you have Google caching it, and then you have their CDN. And they only will cache your page if it validates correctly. So again, if you have anything wrong with an AMP page, it won't validate, it won't show up, it won't be in the search results. And all of this amounts to, depending on the, there's lots of different <laughs> measurements for this, but we can say a, an average of four times faster. Pinterest has imp implemented this, and this is, the, this is the number that they have used. Twitter's implemented this in, in parts of their app. And again, because it's an open source project, people are using this differently, but depending on the, the place, the pl depending on a number of factors, sometimes you could say it's 85% faster, sometimes you could say it's four times faster. Four times faster sounds cooler, so I put that one up. <laughs> uh, other other, other uh, research suggests that it used 10 times less data. So that is a kind of a bonus to to the people that are consuming your websites. So in addition, Google won't tell us specifically about how all of their SEO stuff works, but we know that they prefer fast pages, and AMP is very fast, so most people believe that this has a positive effect on SEO, and it seems to be the case. So just a little bit about the reaction to this is that lots of publishers are interesting. And I, I see articles with statements like this one. It's only a matter of time before AMP formatting becomes synonymous with publishing content for mobile devices. Remember when I read that, I thought, wow, that is, that's ambitious. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be true. I don't know if we all have to decide whether that should be true or not, but that's, what some, that's how some people are interpreting AMP. And, oh. That is the last slide that I have. Um, so the next part of this, Mark is gonna talk about specifically uh, how we implemented this in Drupal. All right. Uh, so, wonderful introduction there about what AMP is, and now the question is, how can you get this working with your website? How can you take advantage of the benefits that AMP has to offer? And so that's what we've been working on for the last few months, is 
coming up with a solution that will work well with Drupal. And so I'm going to talk about how to do that. So how does this work when somebody comes to your website? How do they see the AMP version of the page? So you have a URL, and it's my awesome post. And it's worth noting, like, this is focused on articles and blog posts and that sort of static content. This isn't about shopping carts and e-commerce and things like that. Maybe it will be someday. But this is mostly about reading content on your phone and having that happen in a fast way. So if you come to a slightly different version of the URL with a query string and AMP in it, then we will go and deliver the AMP version of the page. So what happens behind the scenes, if you're kind of familiar with some things about how Drupal works, is that a content type can have different view modes. You can have a teaser and a full view mode. And now we have an AMP view mode that, that will change the way that your page displays. And then we also change behind the scenes uh, to a different theme. And we'll talk about what happens with both of those things. But that allows you to provide some different styles for how your page will look when somebody's looking at the AMP version of it. Cool. So how do you get that working on Drupal? How do you make that a thing? So we have three parts to this. We have a module, and we have a theme, and we have a library. And they all work together to do all the AMP things that you want. And so AMP and AMP theme are both in beta stage on Drupal.org, and the AMP library is available on GitHub. And this is a PHP library. And it is available through Composer. So this is the module and the theme are available and work and have been tested and are feature compatible in both Drupal 8 and Drupal 7. We are developing both of them simultaneously. So whether you have an existing Drupal site or you're just getting started with Drupal 8, either way, you are in good hands. Uh, we do require PHP 5.5. That's a requirement for the PHP library. And that's really a good thing for you to be doing anyhow because security support has stopped for anything below PHP 5.5. So we've had some questions about that. You know, why can't I run this on a server that doesn't have PHP 5.5? And um, that's, that's the way that this works. And if you're on something lower than 5.5, check on your hosting, because there could be some security concerns with that. So um, great. So how do we, what are all these pieces? What about the module and the theme and the library? What do each of those things do? So the AMP module is what provides the view mode, uh, which allows you to have special field formatters that will take the fields on your content and do some little tweaking to be able to use the AMP elements and uh, provide some different options for how those will work. There's some overall configuration that you do for the site, and the AMP module is what sets that up. And then some of the templates, some of the theming happens within the module where we're providing some alternate templates for those new AMP versions of the fields. And some of the components for AMP, some of the AMP elements are already built into the one big piece of JavaScript that gets added with the, the AMP runtime, but some of them are optional. So the module will take care of loading in. There's some specific script elements for those AMP provided JS, it's on the AMP CDN, but we, we connect those two together. And then once you get to that query string in your AMP and you're on a AMP based page, then it will take care of doing the switching. Uh, so what about the AMP theme? Why do we need a theme and a module? Well, the theme takes care of site-wide markup. So your HTML template, your page template, your node template, things that are not the field markup generally, to make some additional tweaks that are necessary because AMP is very specific about the, the HTML that you need to have in order for it to be validated. And so we're taking care of a lot of the different tweaks that are necessary to make that work. Uh, within an AMP theme is also where you will take care 
of doing custom styles. If you want to have a custom look for your AMP pages so that it will match you know, in, in certain ways the look of the rest of your website, you will want to have a custom AMP theme to do that. And we'll talk about how that works in a little bit. And the AMP library is there so that it can process text fields. So generally this is the body portion of your article because there's lots of things that can go on in there. A lot of times there's different embeds that get put in for, for blog posts and articles. Uh, there may be a Facebook widget. There may be a Pinterest widget. All kinds of uh, fun and exciting things can happen inside that body field. And so the PHP library will go through and it will take a look at all of that and it will find things that match up and replace it with the AMP version of that content automatically. Some of the field formatters that we are providing allow you a little bit more fine-grained control over how that displays, but the AMP library will take care of the other parts that are not as easy to manipulate. And then this is an optional step. We can also do a final pass after all of the HTML for the page has rendered. The library can go through and do one more check through to find if anything is invalid and if it's invalid remove it because you really want to make sure that your HTML validates or all of the cool things about AMP won't happen. And it all, the PHP library can also provide some validation feedback if you're, it, it can go through and remove things that are invalid and if you're trying to figure out why something isn't showing up on the AMP page and you want to figure out what's going on, it can provide some additional uh, validation where you could look at an individual page and see what's going on and, and get some information that might help you figure things out. And the AMP library gets pulled into Drupal uh, with, from the AMP module. In Drupal 8, it's pulled in uh, with a service, and in Drupal 7, it's pulled in a little bit of a different way. But that's where it's coming from. Cool, so how do you get that set up? Uh, especially like with the PHP library and the Drupal side of things, what do you do to do that? So I uh, mentioned before, the PHP library comes in through Composer, which if you're using Drupal 8, you're gonna be very familiar with soon enough. Uh, Composer lets you pull in packages from lots of different PHP projects and combine them together uh, to make wonderful Drupal magic. Um, a symphony of Drupal magic, you might say. Um, <laughs> All right, so um, uh, Drupal 8 has a thing called the autoloader, and it does some really neat stuff where you can put in your PHP classes, you can put a statement at the top that says, use this class, and then it will automatically get loaded. You don't have to do a require statement where you specifically locate where that file is located. You give it the name of it, and it loads it up. And that works really neat for pulling in things from multiple projects. Uh, Drupal 7 does not have that. So Composer Manager is a really good tool to make that work. Um, Composer in Drupal 8, we're kind of working on changing our recommendations for that, but we're probably going to be recommending that you integrate the PHP library directly with your Composer JSON file for the project as a whole. Drush is also a really useful tool for getting this set up. Um, Drush is great for enabling uh, and installing and enabling the, the theme and the module. Uh, you could also use Drupal Console, which is a new pro if you're working with Drupal 8, that's also a really great tool for, for doing these things. But uh, the important thing to keep in mind is you want to get the library and the theme installed first, and then after that you want to do the module, because the module has a dependency set upon those libraries and themes being set up. So once you get in installed, great, you are on your way. Uh, the next thing you want to do is start configuring things. And so there's a configuration page for AMP. And uh, from that page, it'll have a list of all of your different content types that you have on your site. And you can go to, there's links to go to them to enable the view mode for that content type. So you can pick which one. You don't have to have it for all of your content types. You can say, I've got articles and we really just want it for that content type. And that's totally fine to do. So you go and enable it. And then afterwards there's another link that will take you to the, page, the, the AMP view mode configuration page so then you can decide what are the fields and formatters. You can have a different order from the rest of your pages. Select uh, the AMP specific formatters and get all that set up. 
The other thing that you need to do is select an AMP theme. The AMP theme project actually comes with two parts. There's the AMP base theme, which sets up kind of some sensible defaults that every single AMP theme will have. And then there's also the example sub-theme, AMP, yeah, right. It, it is actually spelled like that, I'm responsible. So um, that is an example of how you can do sub-theming so that you can set up custom styles, how you can get those custom styles into the inline head section of your HTML. And then if you want to have a customized version, you can make your own sub-theme. And so on the configuration page, you want to select that. You want to select which sub-theme that you are using. Uh, so you can create your own if you want. And that will take care of doing all the markup changes you need to support your styles. You can put template overrides, that sort of thing. You can have uh, pre-process functions. And then once you get that done, then themes have blocks. You have a block layout. And you're going to want to determine which things you want, which blocks you want to have show up. And you might want to have a more streamlined version of your page, for example. Maybe you don't want to have all the sidebars. Maybe you just, you know, you have to think about whether you really want to have a menu in there because it's likely those pages will take you to a non-AMP version of that page. And so you kind of want to think about what's the best implementation and really focus on the fact that you want to give people a great reading experience so that they really enjoy the content and they share it with all their friends and everybody's happy and everything's wonderful. Okay, so on that note, ads. So ads are what, you know, they're an important part of the web. They help pay for a lot of important things. And so you can do ads with AMP. And it's done in a way that pages still load quickly. And so right now, we have integrations set up with AdSense and DoubleClick, which at present, you're configuring on the main AMP configuration page. We are working on doing some integrations with existing mod modules out there for Drupal for AdSense and DFP so that you can do that without having to do a lot of manual configuration. And uh, so then you can get those integrated and then place those blocks into your layout for your AMP theme. And analytics, you want to find out what's going on uh, with how are people are using this. And so right now there's a couple different ways to do that. There's AMP pixel, which is basically a tracking pixel. And right now that's on our configuration page and we're looking at working on some other ways to make some more robust support for tracking pixels that can allow you to work with multiple providers and uh, have multiple tracking pixels if you need them. Um, and then we're also doing some integration with Google Analytics. And again, right now that's on the configuration page and that might change so we can integrate directly with like the Google Analytics module, for example. So once you have all of that set up, you wanna make sure that it works. So you're gonna to go to a page that you have this enabled on and you can do this little funky thing right there. Uh, put that in your URL and then pull up something like Chrome DevTools and go to your console. You can do this in Safari too. And uh, the AMP tool will give you some feedback and will say, hey, this thing, you need to fix this thing to be AMP uh, compatible. And then you can go track that down and uh, find the, the little different things that you need to improve to make that work. Uh, you could also, I mentioned the AMP library, you can use that for feedback as well. So cool, those are, yay, you've set up AMP on your website, you have it available now, and you've got super fast things going on, so that's really nice. Um, but I've talked to people about this, we've talked to people about this, and there's a few concerns we've, we've heard from people, and so we wanted to talk about them. I think it's always fair to talk about, you know, the pluses and, and concerns people have. And, and some people have asked, you know, why are we going to do this? Why are we going to take the effort to do this and do one more thing? And it's really fast. Um, the night Game of Thrones premiered. I got done watching it. It was a really good episode. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. And so I wanted to read a, you know, some people's thoughts on it. So I, I Googled that. And uh, I, I was on my phone. And ooh, there was a nice little amp carousel at the top. And I clicked. And it was, it's just amazing. It just pulls up instantly. It's super, 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 super fast. I could put more supers. But it's really fast. And 
And I read the article, it was great, and then uh, there was like a related article link at the bottom, and I went to that, and it was to the non-AMP version of the page, and that made me sad inside because it did not load as quickly, and it was kind of jumping around and things. And it was not as good a reading experience, and it was still a good article, but you know, that first one made me really happy, and the second one made me like, you know, pretty happy. So um, it's, it matters, it creates a good experience for people. Um, and people have said, well, is this only about search rank? Is this only about getting into a top position on the uh, Google search page? Is that really something that, that makes me feel uncomfortable that I'm doing all this work just for that? And I think it's important, Matthew pointed this out, it's already being used by other things. Uh, Twitter has an implementation with Twitter moments. I think LinkedIn did something, Pinterest is doing something, uh, Feedly. So more and more services are out there that are making use of AMP pages. So it will be more and more useful, not just for search ranking. And uh, you, Matthew did a great job talking about this, so I'll just mention this really quickly. In con is this an open thing? And is this, we all care about the open web, where Drup Drupal people tend to care about that a lot. And, and I certainly understand concerns about that this is a, a separate thing, this is different. I love responsive web design, and, and how that works. But I also like this because it's solving a really tricky problem, which is how do we have really super fast loading websites that also can be monetized? And because that's important too, like the web exists if, there's, if it works in a business way. And the other solutions out there to this pro problem, I do not think are as open. Apple News and Facebook instant articles are more closed than this solution. And this is something that you can contribute to. There is a GitHub page. You can go file an issue. You can go write some code against this. You can do a PR. There is a way for you to participate in this and that you can look at the source code. I feel very good about that. Uh, I've also had people ask, is this like M.Sites? sites? Is this, is this like going back in time to that? And to me, I feel that this is different than that. You are not on your server sniffing out the browsers and having a list of which browsers you're going to switch over to. That's in the responsibility of the people who are linking to your page. They can link to the AMP page or not to your AMP page. You're not manually switching over. I think this is a thing to do in addition to responsive web design. This is an additional thing you can do to make things even faster in certain contexts. And I kind of like to think about it as a souped up version of RSS. You know, RSS is your same content, but it's in a different format that can be consumed in a different way. And that's kind of what I think AMP is kind of like. And so, um, yeah, that's, that, that's one of the key parts of our philosophy, philosophy is that you get to use your same content on your site. You are not rewriting things for AMP. You are not making an alternate version of your page and saving two versions of your page. You have one page and we tweak some different things about the formatting, but it's ultimately the same content everywhere, which is really important. And then I've also had people say, well, you could be fast without AMP. You could do things without AMP and, and still be super fast. You can do things. And that's true. Um, but this kind of forces the decision. We talk, Matthew talked about the, the business forces that, that sometimes lead to things. We, we need to monetize things with ads. We need to have analytics in place in order to have the business side of the web work. And, and that drives a lot of the decisions. And this is a way to provide a sandbox way to try out some new techniques, in my opinion. And, and force the decision, if you're gonna use AMP and get the benefits of it, which really has a lot of benefits, then we're gonna put some guardrails on. And that's going to force pages to load quickly. Yes, there are definitely other ways that you can do this without AMP, but that involves figuring out how you're going to do those, those business parts of the website with, uh, while retaining that speed. And that's, that's challenging. Um, and along with that, whether this is too prescriptive to say that this is the only way you can do this, this is the only way you can get into that um, top search carousel, there's other ways to do it. Uh, there are some discussions happening about having some standardized sets of policies in place for here's the things you need to do for, um, 
for having a super fast website and getting some benefits out of that, maybe similar to AMP. And there was some discussion. Tim Cadillac wrote a post about content performance policies, and he's, he's been talking about that. And that, that discussion has kind of been evolving. There's been a discussion about sandbox policies with, with iframes that might also set up some strict guidelines for, for how that might work. And that's really great. There may be some things that emerge down the road. And if there's some standards, then AMP might be an implementation method to follow those standards. It might be, hey, here's one way that you can get set up pretty easily to follow these rigorous performance standards for web pages. And, and that's nice. But this is something that you can do today. This is available today. And you don't need to wait for six months or a year or however long it might take to come to sort of standards consensus. This is something you can get started right now. So in my opinion, I think that this is worth trying out. I think it is worth giving this a try, and because your, your customers will have an immediate benefit from doing so. And because there's ads and because there's analytics that are built in this, you can track how this works. And, and if it ends up being a very beneficial thing, you see additional engagement, which I think people will see. I think you'll see that people will be sharing content more, they'll be looking at more articles, getting more ad impressions, and it will be a better experience, but you'll be able to see that in the analytics. And you know what? If, if people do that and then they decide, you know, we've got to make all of our websites super fast, well, hey, that's, that's a cool thing too. But right now, you can just get started right now and get started with AMP on Drupal. And wouldn't it be neat if we could see what that would look like? I think that'd be kind of neat, Karen. What about, maybe just right now, you could just show us how, how that would look. All right. All right. Look on the Manage tab in the upper left. Uh, oh. Yeah, that. Well, I mean, I want to get my screen smaller. That's why I'm trying to figure out. It was it was right before, and it. How do I get out of here? Can you just do this thing? I don't know. Like that? Oh, there we go. Whoops. That'll take care of that page, but every time I move, it's going to get too big again. All right. So one, one thing that we did um, is we created a website for this. So we have a page at our site at amp.lullabot.com. And what we did is we, um, and this is all blurry because I don't have the right resolution, unfortunately. Um, and I don't know how to fix it. Um, so I'll do my best. Um, if you go to amp.lobot.com, what we've done is we've created a website that is a collection of articles about AMP, and ultimately we hope that it will also be uh, some future documentation about AMP. And these are AMP pages as well. So for instance, if I go click on an article here, um, yes, I wish I knew what I was doing. Right arrow. Huh? Just right arrow, yeah. Right arrow. No, you but you got to be in the text box. Huh? No, I'm, I'm trying to get the resolution down. No. Uh, Here. Yeah, it's a Mac. Sorry. What does it call you do? This was all working when I set it up the first time. Sorry. I can't figure out how to get back to the place where I set re resolution. Um, what's that? Command space. Command? That, that didn't work. Oh, shoot. There we go. There you go. There we go. What's that? 
Ah, there we go. Did that work? Did it do anything? All right, well, at least we can see it. Okay, so if I click on an, a link here now, now I can finally see this. So here's my regular page. And as you can see, I've got a, I've got a theme that, um, basically this is the bootstrap theme and I added in a Google font because I want to illustrate that you can do things like Google fonts even in these AMP pages. So here's a regular article that I've got. If I go to this article and I put a question mark AMP at the end of it, I now get the AMP version of this article. And as you can see, the AMP version of the article also uh, is taking advantage of the same Google font that I was using on my main one um, to illustrate the fact that, that I can um, pick up any aspect of that site that I want to, or any aspect of the design that I want to. There's a bunch of different things that I can do. Whoa. Command zero. Command zero. There we go. Um, so we talked about the fact that you, you can check and see if this thing validates by adding the pound uh, development equals one. So if I bring up uh, the inspector and the council and I refresh this page and look down in the council and it's still going, it's just slow. Do, 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 there we go. Uh, and you can see that it says AMP validation is successful. Uh, if, if AMP validation, if anything had not validated on that page, it would have showed up uh, there. So I have the ability not only to create the AMP pages that I want, but also to check for myself whether or not they're going to validate. Um, we've built a couple other things in here. Uh, we've got something called Warn Fix. And if I put Warn Fix on there, oops, let's get this out of here. Oh, and it's cached. So that's why it's not coming up. Uh, everything is heavily cached. Um, Can you throw another query on there? What's that? Can you throw another query on there? Ah, there you go. And not. Okay. And now warn fix. Ah, uh, yeah, lost the warn fix. And warn and not. Okay, um, what I should have seen at the bottom of this was uh, some information that told me that my, whether everything in my AMP page passed through the AMP library. Um, so as we talked about before, there, there are several components to this. So one component of this is our AMP library. What our AMP library is doing is basically taking the page, the information that's on the page now, and running it through a library, and the library is basically a big find and replace. So it's, it's like, here's all the things that AMP expects, or here's all the things that AMP doesn't expect. Transform all the things that AMP doesn't expect into things AMP expects, or strip them out, one or the other. Um, so that's what that li AMP library does. So if I put warn fix on the end of this, and I, and I clear my cache out, which I did not get done correctly yet, um, but if I have a, my page configured that way, I'll get a message at the bottom that will tell me, uh, the amp, the replacement was successful, or it'll say, um, I found some unexpected thing and I wasn't able to fix it, you know, give you some information about all that. You could do another article, Karen. What's that? You could do a different article. I could do a different article, couldn't I? I totally could. Except that what I'm thinking is, I can't remember if I set the configuration up. So I want to show you the configuration. So we get into the back end. When you set up the amp module, um, and both the guys referred to this. We've got some AMP configuration. So what we've done, and this is early stages on this whole AMP module, but so what we've done is we've done a lot of global configuration and we're kind of going through the process right now of evaluating each one of these uh, global things to see if there's other ways that we can do it. But currently what I can do is I can identify which content types uh, do I want to enable for AMP because you won't necessarily want all your content types to display AMP. Um, so you can, you can decide which ones you want. So if I, uh, for instance, on this one, I have uh, the article enabled. I can go here to configure. You can see I've got the AMP view mode. And in the AMP view mode, I have a couple formatters that you wouldn't normally see on a, on a um, Drupal page, and that's because they're provided by the AMP module. So I have an AMP image formatter, and I have an AMP text formatter. And there's going to be others that are going to um, show up as, you know, as, as the more things develop. 
the, inter the important thing about this is if you have an image on an AMP page it, uh, in the AMP view mode, it needs to use the AMP formatter because of the regular formatter is not going to display the image the, the correct way. Same thing with text. If you have text, um, like a body field, on an AMP page, you need to use the AMP formatter because the, otherwise there's going to be stuff in that body field that shouldn't be there, uh, and that'll keep your, your uh, AMP page from validating. So that's one thing that I can do. Let me go back, and when I click Save, it's going to bring me right back here again. Um, I can also identify what AMP theme am I using. So I, there's a, there's a uh, AMP base theme that comes with the AMP theme, and that's your starting point. Um, but you can uh, create a sub-theme off of it, and in this case, I've created a sub-theme called Custom AMP Sub-Theme, which makes it really easy to figure out what I'm doing. And basically, the custom AMP sub-theme is doing nothing but adding the Google fonts to the base theme. Um, it's not really doing much else besides that. If you're using Google Analytics, and again, this, we, we struggled with what was the best way to get Google Analytics um, incorporated into this. So initially, you would put your Google Analytics ID into this field, and then the theme will take care of making sure that that analytics code gets attached to all your, uh, to all your AMP pages. Uh, we've talked about doing that in some other way, like hooking it into the analytics module or taking advantage of the analytics module, right? We've actually, I think we've already done this in oh, the latest dev okay. branch, where if you have the Google Analytics module, we're just going to use the, the ID from that and then hide this field, and the same with the AdSense and the double click, where yeah. we're adding integration with other commonly used modules, but we also have some of these defaults here if you don't want to have to add a whole module. Right. So there's, so this area, this whole configuration area is going to be an evolving area uh, where we figure out which things really need to be global configuration options and which things we can maybe hook into existing modules in one way or another. Um, and then there's this thing down at the bottom and I thought I wanted to show this because I think this is interesting. So this is, this is uh, related to that AMP library. So that's that PHP find and replace library that we use. And if you want to, you can, uh, there are several things that you can turn on. So power user means, uh, do you want to run your whole page, do, like, do you want to do a one last pass of running your whole page through that AMP library to see if there's any remaining stuff on that page that doesn't belong? So that's what this checkbox will do. We basically do our best effort to clean up the components of the page, and, and your theme hopefully has only put the things on it that belong on there. But there are, are, you know, various modules could hook things in. There's lots of different ways that other things could end up on your page. Um, so this checkbox will uh, provide that one last pass. It's one more pass, which takes just a little bit of time, uh, but it's more, uh, gives you a little more control over whether or not your page ended up clean. And then we've got uh, two options. We've got an option to uh, add an HTML comment with some statistics on the page. So like especially when you're during the process of development, you can see you know, how much is it slowing down the page. Like I'm doing that extra pass. How much did it slow the page down to do that extra pass? Do I really need to do it? Do I really want to do it? And then some debugging stuff. You can send some debugging messages yeah. to the logs. And just want to note, we did you know, some testing with that. And it is very fast. It is that very fast, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the library, uh, I don't know if people are familiar with QueryPath, the library is built on QueryPath, um, which has got a Drupal history as well. So uh, it, it does a pretty good job, but as any of you know, I mean, we, the original thing was to do like regex, and regex is really real. I want to assure everyone, we are not doing regex on doing HTML. Regex. Yeah, that is not, we, that's Cthulhu not. Cthulhu is not involved here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in general, I mean, in general, sort of architecturally speaking, the module provides some configuration and field formatters and things of th that nature. What the library is doing is taking the body field and doing its best to convert whatever kind of crazy stuff you want to throw in there to AMP HTML. So that's kind of the basic approach to how, how your page is handled. That, you're, we, we, we wanted to make it as turnkey as possible so that you can install the module and not really have to do too much on this page and then just have it work with what you have once you've configured your view mode. But other than that, uh, we know that people, I mean, we work with clients, so we know that people put lots of stuff in the body field. Mm -hmm. So 
the, the library we made is a separate piece, so there are already other people using that library, and the idea is we're just converting HTML to AMP HTML, but let's do this with PHP in a way that others can use as well. I do, I just want to, the, the last, I, we want to turn this over for questions, but one last thing I just wanted to say is the amp.lilobot.com we hope would be a URL that you can refer to. If this is a subject that you're interested in, we're, we're going to try and use this as a place where we keep up with what's going on in this whole area. So mm -hmm. let's, let's do open it up for questions, and if you have questions, you need to use the microphone so that it gets into the recording. Well, one other point, I'm going to be bold and say this, is we hope to have a 1.0 release of this module within a month or so, but that's, that's, what we're, that's what we're aiming towards, and we will be actively developing this module for the next couple months. I can say that with, with certainty. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Um, do you have any idea how long the caches live in Google? And how to, if, and whether or not you can bust them if you need to. Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. That's a really excellent question. <laughs> I, I have never researched that. I wish I could give you an answer, but I can't. Next Sorry. time we talk with them, we'll, we'll ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't try and get back in touch with you, Yvonne. Yeah. So, first of all, thank you for, for your work on this module. It's uh, <clears throat> terrific, absolutely terrific. Um, I have two questions, actually. One of the things I noticed on the AMP page, if you would switch back over to the AMP page on, on the screen, yes. that would be great. Oops. Oops. I didn't want the warn fix. But Is that it, it becomes very li linear. Um, you lose your navigation, at least in this example. Well, that's because I did. If, there we go. There's the warn fixed man message, by the way. Um, yeah, so this is by, this is deliberate. At this point, the AMP theme has no sidebars, right? Okay. It's, it is a header, a body, and a, a footer. That's it, that's all that's in it. Um, that's because most of the time these pages are showing up in mobile devices, so we're keeping that super simple, but there is no, pre, you know, that's not so a, pre, that's not a requirement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in the theme, actually, I was gonna show you that. Let's show you what the, what's in the theme. And you can see that that is just what we put in there. And you can put other things in there. Right. When we looked at other existing implementations on sites that are using AMP, like the Washington Post, I think, was one example, um, a lot of them had that kind of single column feel. Some of them right. have some related articles on the bottom, and that's certainly something uh, yeah. you could do. One, one of the advantages of the fact that this is a Drupal theme <clears throat> is it works just like every other Drupal theme. You put whatever you want to in there. Okay, terrific. It's up Quick, to you. My, my second question, I have a client who um, has a very popular site and it's 80% mobile. Uh, the visitors are 80% on mobile devices. Um, would it make sense just to switch the whole thing over to AMP or is that, am I misunderstanding what AMP is and why you would use it? No, at this point, no. Because no, really, no, this point, no it would no. not make sense to do that okay. because AMP is not a replacement for responsive design. It's not a replacement for your website. It's really just a different way to serve your site. To Right now, it has a sp specific use case of the, the Google and caching, but right now, we, there, we don't have, like we didn't build into the module a way to detect, uh, we don't have this yet, I don't know if we will, but, but a way to say, oh, this person's on a mobile device, let's show them the AMP page. We certainly could, yeah. but that's not how it's working at this point. It's more about here is a way that other providers can take your content and cache it in, and use it how they want, but still show your content in the way you want it to be shown. So yeah. my question is related to what you just said, which is on my homepage, how do I determine whether to add the question mark AMP to a URL? Well, that's, so AMP, the way I think about AMP is more like it's a content type for the web. So making a home page an AMP page at this point doesn't well, particular. Even, even a normal page, yeah. if a visitor comes in on a mobile device, I'd like to serve the links to the articles so AMP pages. So the AMP project, the way that the AMP project describes how people should set this up with their website, is not with that sort of browser sniffing. Uh, you, it, like I said, it's kind of like RSS. You're providing an alternate format that other things that are out there can consume. 
and it's not necessarily your website's responsibility to switch people over to that alternate format. It's other services that are out there that link to articles and blog posts and that sort of thing can choose to serve that up, but that's, that's not how AMP the AMP project describes how, how you get people to there with switch, browser switching. Has, has there been any attempt to, do you remember, remember back in the old days when uh, RSS was the in thing, mm -hmm. uh, there would be a little RSS icon that would appear at the top of the web browser window to indicate to the user that there's an RSS version available. Has yeah. there been any attempt to get browser makers to integrate that using AMP? You know, this is a new thing. It's really like been out for a few months. So that, that's an interesting idea, um, and that's might, something that might happen down the road. Yeah, I, right now, that I, is not. I remember asking Google that, that question as yeah. well when we had our meetings with Google, and I think their initial idea was the only ones that would care would be the bots. So this was all about yeah. getting the metadata so the bots could find it, and and they didn't feel. I don't think they felt like there was any reason why a user would want to pick that page, um, but that doesn't mean yeah. it isn't worth. Exploring that idea. The people that are working on this project so far have been shown to be very open to solving real yeah. problems that people have. And that's exactly the kind of thing that, I mean, we could create an issue in the AMP HTML project yeah. on GitHub and say, this is something we think might be good. Um, I don't know if that would be good, but I, I know that's not where the project's going right now. Okay. And then uh, how does AMP deal with rich pages with lots of images? If you have an article which, you know, is multiple paragraphs plus images, how does it deal with that? They, they, they have to go through this process. Every, every image on the page needs to comply yeah. with the AMP standard, so it, it has to be converted one way or another. If you have images that are in the, the, the content area, then the AMP library takes care of converting those over to AMP image and if elements. if you have image fields, that, that works we've right got now a today. formatter for that, right? Yep. Um, I think we're probably need we to get out of here. We have three, we three, three, three more minutes, so okay. a few so more questions here. On your implementation, you require um, the query string for AMP. Do you have any intention of making that a configuration? Thinking like the Guardians instance, they use AMP dot, and I yeah. imagine that has a lot to do with SEO tracking, uh, analytics tracking, things like that. And, you know, the query string probably doesn't do quite as good of a job as separating those. Uh, for the analytics team, um, do you have any intention on making that configurable? We've already switched it once <laughs> <laughs> for performance reasons to being a query string. Yeah. Um, slash amp. We started out with slash amp. Which is what WordPress is using. Yeah. The but automatic and Google One uses slash amp. So the issue is that that means creating an alias for every single page which if you've got a large, if, I mean this is geared towards publishers that likely have lots and lots of content and there's a really big performance impact from creating and maintaining all of those aliases as part of this, the, the query string. Smart people that really know <laughs> these things uh, jumped in and, and suggested we go this route and it's been working pretty this, well. This has to do with how Drupal works. So yeah. if, we, if we have slash amp at the end, it's a different URL. Sure. So that meant that when you went to enable the content type, we work with publishers who have tens of thousands of pieces of content we'd have to go and somehow configure or decide how many of those we want to make AMP pages, and we, we were creating aliases, and it was just ridiculous. So by making it a, par a parameter, it, it just works without having to use any aliases. So it's kind of a Drupal-y thing. It also works much better with Drupal 8 and how, how Drupal 8 does other related things with parameters. There, 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 we did look to see what other people were doing, and it's, it seems to be divided in terms of whether they're doing slashes or query strings or whatever. It's, it's all which is sometimes involved with Bootstrap, and you only get 50k of CSS, and so you'd have to do a very limited Bootstrap build. I don't know if you could get it down to 50k. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. I think they've got. Yeah. Last they, question. They, they've got another session coming in here. Okay, I've, I've been deleting the block, the uh, body element and then adding content and summary separate as, as fields. So does the text formatter work on content block or is it only works on the body block? It can work on any text field. Any text field, okay. Yep. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. Thank you.
One more to do. One more. Thank you again. Thank oh, you. Thanks. Yeah, so there is a, an amp gallery an amp element. Gallery. We haven't implemented it yet. I'm not sure if we will or not. It's not on our list right now. That's right. So there's an amp gallery element. You could maybe do something with views to, you know, this do is your power. I'll get, I'll get the power. Thank you. Oh, great. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're, all right. Thanks. Hey. Sure. Yeah. So you want to do that with Composer, and Composer will take yeah, care of. Are you doing with this? Composer manager will take. Just like. But there is value to them. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> composer manager will take care of putting it in a vendor's folder. Oh, really? Yeah. Probably the level. Uh, so uh, it depends on how you have things set up. Making that configuration uh, as uh, might be something. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to run Composer Manager on your local. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I guess I'd be curious yeah, as to why. Have to find out. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it would, um, what you would need to do I, would be something I'll take equivalent to what the text oh, formatter right, you does. Want to so you do, you'd want to look at the way the text formatter works, and basically you know, that's what you've got to do. You're going right now, but take a look at it. Yeah. That's one way to consider it. But, I mean, if it doesn't really make sense, we can also oh, basically. You have to create that one. Yeah. URL. You have yeah. To create alias. Is yeah. that one mine? So. No, this one's mine. Oh, did you get I gave it? you. No, I gave you yours. Yep. I'm a little bit frazzled. Frazzled. The benefit is that you can have the same URL subject. Yeah. 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 And the other thing that it's um, good for is it, it, it gives Mark That's more happiness when he's um, surfing from link to link in AMP because then I don't have to go through the body image, the body content, and replace links to well, you can the also links that are internal to my site to question mark AMP. The, 